www.capitalboost.com. You can visit the website to find the deals and the details there, but I'll go through the concept of crowdfunding before I go into what Capital Boost does. So crowdfunding, what is it? Basically, it's funding from people to people. Instead of going to the bank, and the bank making use of the money that they have in the deposits or whatever, and providing you financing, now people can put their financing needs online through crowdfunding platforms and get financing from other people who are interested in the project that they do or interested in supporting them. So crowdfunding comes in more than one type. So just to summarize it again, crowdfunding is raising a small amount of money from a large group of people for any certain purpose or project. Now the projects are usually of four different kinds. So people raise money through crowdfunding either for donations, which it can be something as simple as your common charity website like Red Cross or um, any kind of Islamic charity. They have a platform on their website where you can just use your credit card and donate. That can even be considered as a type of crowdfunding because everyone is coming together to donate, but the cause is charity. Okay, this has been around for a very, very long time. We have one in Malaysia now called Skola Fund. This is a very interesting platform uh, designed by a, a group of friends, three guys, I think two Singaporeans, one Malaysian. And so basically they wanted to help people who needed scholarships, get scholarships without having to go through the long process of all applications. Or maybe someone is in their final year and they just can't pay for their final year of tuition and things like that. So how could we help them? So with this platform, Skola Fund, they made it so that people can put their request online and then tell people about their story and then after that request how much they need to pay the tuition for that semester and it has been quite successful and the founder has been featured on the Forbes Asia so you can look for uh, Shamil, Ahmed Shamil and you can uh, find an interview with him there. So now students are able to get financing from other students or even from parents or friends around the world. And it could be as simple as a thousand people giving just five ringgit. It doesn't have to be from one person. But through the crowd, many things are possible with small donations from a large group of people. Uh, the next is reward-based crowdfunding. Now, most people have probably heard of Kickstarter. Has anyone heard of Kickstarter.com before? Okay. So Kickstarter is a place more for inventors, people with ideas. They may have an invention, and they have the team, they have the design, but the only thing is missing is the financing. So they put their presentation online to say that, okay, today I've invented a new smartwatch. Uh, my smartwatch is better than everyone else's and it has features A, B, C, and D. I just need $50,000 in order to take it from uh, the design phase <coughs> to the market phase. And then the rewards will be that if you give, you know, just $5 or $20, we'll send you a t-shirt or a mug or we'll put your name on our website. But for those who give at least $100, we'll give them one of the first models that are produced. And those who give one, uh, maybe $200, we'll give them two models, and we'll let them choose the color. And the rewards go on and on. So it's kind of like a free sale, and there is no exchange of money, but it's, it's, it's exchange in kind. So the people who support, they give money, and the people who are raising the funds, they will give rewards in kind. And this is used by artists who want to record albums, inventors who want to invent things, uh, even journalists who want to fund their trips uh, to go and uh, cover stories all have used crowdfunding successfully to finance their endeavors. Uh, the last two are what we call investment based, which is uh, debt based and equity. Um, so, Capital Boost is uh, by some regulators considered as debt based because people are given money uh, and then in the end they will take back the same amount of money, their principal plus uh, uh, profit. But this is a Islamic based platform, so it's not using interest, but they will actually uh, conduct a purchase of an asset and then they will sell it to the SME with the market. Um, and equity is basically where people can raise equity in their company from unaccredited investors. So now the amount to enter into equity investments for uh, crowdfunding may be around, uh, in Malaysia, around maybe 2,000 ringgit. And in America, they're also doing the same thing, around, around $500 or $1,000. Uh, in Singapore, uh, they don't have uh, regulations yet, so it's more open. But now, 
people who want to invest that are more of the, um, I can say, non-high net worth individuals, they are able to now take advantage of a larger portfolio, a larger range of investment options through crowdfunding. And for companies who want to raise equity, they have now a medium to do so that is less tedious than trying to go for an IPO and things like that. So these are the basic four models of crowdfunding. And these are some statistics for the global crowdfunding industry uh, taken from crowdsourcing.com. Uh, and this is basically the growth of the crowdfunding industry from 2013 to 2015. So 6.1 billion USD in 2013, and all the way to 2015, you can see it's multiplied by five. More than that, actually. So the industry has proven itself, and it's been growing very much. One of the leaders now, actually, is China. Previously, everything was happening in the US and Europe. But now Asia is uh, rapidly adopting crowdfunding. It's becoming more and more popular, and China is definitely leading the way. Uh, but Malaysia now is also becoming very competitive as the government has issued some regulations for crowdfunding, and now we're starting to see more players in it. So the benefits of crowdfunding are quick access to funds. I just should put here quick access to funds. Uh, we have projects, for example, that are for real estate, and we have raised the full amount that which may have been worth about 100,000 ringgits in one week or less. The funds are raised within one week, and then it's just a matter of how fast the investors can make the bank transfer, and the project can be fully funded even within one month. So the, uh, the application process and the, uh, the processing of the investment from the platform is very fast. So compared to banks, crowdfunding is much, much faster. Uh, validation of your business. Since crowdfunding requires a crowd of people or a group of people to support your business, if you are successful in crowdfunding, it means you do have a large group of people that believe in your business or are interested in your business to the extent that they're willing to put in money. Now, a lot of people are willing to open your website maybe, but if people are willing to put money into your business, that means they believe in it. And so now a lot of uh, startups, before they are able to get venture capital, they are requested to go for crowdfunding. And if they are successful in crowdfunding, then venture capitalists will be comfortable to invest in them. Uh, increase in market exposure. Crowdfunding happens online. And so successful crowdfunding must be uh, viral to a certain extent. It must be per pervasive on the internet. You must have the collaboration of online magazines and newspapers. You must have a strong social media presence. You must have lots of people to share your your your, um, your pitch, you know, on you know, social media, Facebook, Twitter, and things like that. So you need to be strong in all these areas uh, in order to do successful crowdfunding. So people who do crowdfunding well, even maybe if they don't get all the money that they seek, they will definitely get a lot of market exposure. And uh, lastly, to build loyal customers. So those who raise money through crowdfunding, for example, on uh, CapitalBoost.com and they are successful. The SMEs that are able to take the financing through Capital Boost, and then after that payback, and the investors, when they receive their returns, they're very happy. So when that same company goes on Capital Boost again and requests financing the second time, the investors are more than willing to finance this company because they have a good track record. So successful crowdfunding usually generates uh, more success in the fact that people will trust the company more. And so the basic model at Capital Boost is that we have a large group of people in the world, and starting in Singapore, but now we've expanded it internationally. We have people that have some extra money that they're willing to invest. And then we have SMEs who need financing. So Capital Boost comes in the middle and provides the means of connecting this crowd with this crowd. So basically, this company is just a year old, but what they've been doing is facilitating investment from small investors and large investors into SMEs, which are in the middle range, who have at least around 100,000 SING worth of sales already completed. And so when the investors put their money in the SMEs, they are actually buying the assets on, on uh, they're buying the assets for the SMEs, and then after that, sell to the SMEs with the markup. So the markup is the profit that will go back to the investors. 
And so from facilitating this whole process, Capital Boost will take uh, a percentage. And so now Capital Boost is in Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. And the model that they use is mostly Muraba from Islamic Finance, which is the profit uh, sale plus percentage. But in some cases, they have used also Mubala, which is kind of uh, investment, joint investment. Uh, which there will be profit and loss sharing. If in the case of loss, they will share the loss. In the case of profit, they will share the profit on a pre-agreed uh, margin. So now, I want to give you a summary of what Capital Boost does in a much more, uh, hopefully, entertaining method. And so we have a promotional video from Capital Boost, which I think you guys will enjoy. So if everything works, Hopefully, yes. Small and medium-sized enterprises, or SMEs, make up 95% of businesses in Southeast Asia. They provide around 70% of total jobs in the region, and yet only 15 to 20% of SME loans are approved by banks. Despite their social and economic importance, it's difficult for SMEs to get funding. Capital Boost aims to solve this problem. We level the playing field by offering Southeast Asian SMEs a crowdfunding platform to raise short-term cash for goods and capital purchases. Our business is Sharia compliant and ethical. Our model is interest-free and done through a cost-plus profit sales structure known as Murabaha. How does Capital Boost crowdfunding work? An SME with assets to purchase submits a funding campaign on www.capitalboost.com. Capital Boost members interested in funding this campaign commit to purchasing the contracted assets for the SME. These assets are then ordered by the SME on behalf of Capital Boost members for immediate use. The SME signs a contract agreeing to purchase the same assets from Capital Boost members at the original cost plus profit in the near term. The profit margin from this transaction is the funding return. To be eligible, a business will need to meet these requirements. Be in operation for at least one year. Have annual sales of at least SGD 100,000. Have a positive free cash flow over the past 12 months. We prefer SMEs which have existing invoices or purchase orders to be paid over the near term. Through stringent screening and in-depth analysis, Capital Boost determines the proper funding amount, funding costs, and funding period. We then help businesses to publish a polished crowdfunding campaign on our website. Via Capital Boost, SMEs get fast funding approval, better rates, increased risk sharing with funders, and short-term working capital financing. To become an investor, register as a member at www.capitalboost.com. Get access to a wide array of SME funding opportunities in Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Like a campaign, Review and analyze the information provided on the SME. Determine the amount you want to invest and sign a funding agreement electronically. Capital Boost members get ethical funding opportunities that offer attractive returns over a short term and are legally structured. Members can also take comfort that funding opportunities have gone through Capital Boost's stringent screening and in-depth due diligence process. So what are you waiting for? Be a Capital Boost member. Fund Asian small businesses and get big returns. Small and medium sized. All right, so. Hopefully the summary through the video tells pretty much most of the story. Um, and this, the rest of the slides are just a little bit of elaboration. So we have a focus on ethics, fairness, and community. So I would like to just take a moment now and explain a little bit about why Capital Boost was started. So the director of Capital Boost, Mr. Early Mutoyo, uh, he's not able to be here today. If he was, he would be presenting for you right now. Uh, he has a background in banking and credit analysis and he had a very successful career but he wanted to do something for Islamic finance he wanted to do something that he believed in was more ethical 
want to do something that would help the 